We've seen a few examples now of circuits that have one and two nodes and how to use the node voltage method to solve. Now I want to show you um, a circuit that has three nodes. Now with three nodes, uh, the arithmetic can get a little bit, I don't know, hairy if you are using substitution. So I'm actually going to show you how you can use some linear algebra to solve these. So let's do an example. Um, suppose we have a circuit like this. I'm actually putting in um, a dependent source in this one so you can see how we would handle that at the same time. So let's let this current source be 4 amps. Suppose that this current source here is 4 times Ix, where Ix is the current that's going through this resistor. This resistor here has a value of 4 ohms. Um, this resistor is 3, this resistor on the top is 2, and then we can let this one be 6 ohms. And um, the steps for node voltages, if you remember, is the first thing we want to do is we want to label all of the nodes. So I've got a node here, this is where the current splits, I'll label this V1. I have another node in between here, I'll label this V2. And then my third node is over here, this is V3. I'm going to let this bottom wire be my reference node. So I'll put a little ground sign there so we know that that's the reference node. Great, so those are the first two steps for node voltage method. The next thing we want to do is we want to use KCL at each one of these nodes to write the currents going in and out. Okay, so I'll start with um, at node V1. So at V1 we have 4 amps coming in due to this current source we're going to have a current that takes this path through the 3 ohm resistor, so I'll label that I1. And then we've got current that's going to take this upper path here, I'll call this I2. Um, the current is going to go through this resistor and then it's going to come back down into this node V3. So just to help myself, I'm going to go ahead and remind myself that this is still current I2 when it comes in over here, all the way on this side. Okay, great, so then at this node, the currents we have coming in are 4 amps and the currents we have coming out are I1 plus I2. So 4 is equal to I1 plus I2 is our KCL equation at node V1. So then at node that we labeled V2 we have I1 coming in, we have Ix coming out, and we have 4 times Ix coming in due to this dependent source. So the currents we have coming in are I1 plus 4Ix, and what we have coming out is Ix. Then lastly, at node V3, we have I2 coming in, we have 4Ix coming out, and then we've got the current that's taking the path through the 6 ohm resistor, and I'll label that I3. So going in, I've got I2, coming out, I've got 4Ix plus I3. So that was the next step for uh, using the node voltage method to solve here. So now the next step is I want to rewrite all three of these equations instead of being in terms of currents, in terms of our node voltages. So firstly, at node V1, I'm going to replace I1 with V1 minus V2 divided by the resistor between. So this is going to be V1 minus V2 divided by 3. I'm going to replace I2 with V1 minus V3 divided by the resistor between, which is 2. So this will be V1 minus V3 divided by 2 ohms. So now I've got my node voltage equation um, that I developed from my node 1 KCL equation. So we'll do the same thing at node 2. I1 I'm going to replace with V1 minus V2 over 3. Um, I still have this 4Ix, but if I can change this equation to kind of not be in terms of Ix, that's going to be better for me. So let me just bring this over to the other side. This is negative 3Ix. So what is Ix? Ix is um, the current that goes through this 4 ohm resistor, so I can actually rewrite this as V2 minus 0 divided by 4. And now instead of an Ix in my equation, because I'm trying to get rid of all the currents, I'm going to have this in terms of V2. So let me go ahead and replace this with negative 3 times V2 minus 0 over 4. 
one minus V2 over three on the left hand side. So then this is going to give me, if I multiply this side by four, multiply this side by three, I'll get four times the quantity V1 minus V2 is equal to negative nine V2. So this will be four V1 minus four V2 is equal to negative nine V2. Therefore, four V1 plus five V2 is equal to zero. Okay, great, so let's continue on. We're gonna to have to make a similar substitution over here at node V3. I'm gonna replace I2 with V1 minus V3 over the resistor between V1 minus V3 divided by two, and that's equal to four times Ix. I'm gonna make this substitution for Ix that I did over here. I know that Ix is V2 over four, V2 over four, and then I'm gonna replace I3 with V3 minus zero over the resistor between, which is six. V3 over six. Now, um, let me simplify this equation if I just multiply everything by, um, let's see, these fours will cancel, that's nice. And I get that if I multiply everything by six, this will give me three times the quantity V1 minus V3 is equal to six V2 plus V3. Three V1 minus three V3 is equal to six V2 plus V3. So this gives me that three V1 minus six V2 minus four V3 is equal to zero, and that's in standard form. Um, this guy's also in standard form. Let's go ahead and put this thing in standard form. So if I multiply um, everything by six, this will give me 24 is equal to two V1 minus two V2 plus three V1 minus three V3. I'm gonna combine like terms so I get five V1 minus two V2 minus three V3. Okay, great. So at this point, you'll notice we have three equations and three unknowns. Um, I already wrote all of these in standard form. So in other words, um, I only have, um, I have whole number of constants being multiplied by V1, V2, V3 in all these equations. I have them all on one side of the equal sign and then I have either zero or whatever the constant is equal to on the other side. Okay, so, um, at this point, with three equations and three unknowns, you could use um, substitution to solve this. It's a little bit messy. Um, an easier way to do this is to actually put this into a matrix and use linear algebra to solve for V1, V2, and V3. So the way we would set that up, um, we need to make sure that all of our equations are in standard form. And we're going to put standard form equations in a matrix. The first equation, the coefficients of my V1, V2, V3 are five, negative two, negative three. And then if this is multiplied by the vector V1, V2, V3, then that's going to be equal to the vector 24 in the first field, okay? So this here, this first equation, I put into my matrix. Now I'm gonna put the second equation into my matrix. The coefficient in front of the V1 is four. The coefficient in front of the V2 is five. There's no V3, so therefore the coefficient is zero. And this is equal to zero, so that means I put this zero over here. Lastly, this third equation, the coefficient in front of the V1 is three. Coefficient on the V2 is negative six. Coefficient on the V3 is negative four, and that's equal to zero. So here's my zero. Now, we've got a couple of options at this point. Um, we can row reduce this matrix. We can augment this with our kind of answer vector, row reduce it, and then solve for V1, V2, V3. You can also use Kramer's rule, which I can show you how to do that in um, another video. But um, just to kind of save us some time, Let's use row reduce echelon form. I found a calculator online, so let me do a screen share. If you go to rrefcalculator.com, we can actually put in how many row, rows and columns we have. So we have um, three rows, we have four columns, 
and we want to enter in our coefficients. So we have 5 and negative 2 and negative 3 and then our kind of answer vector, the first field is 24. For the next row, we have 4, and then 5, and 0, and that's equal to 0. And then we have 3, and negative 6, and negative 4, and that's equal to 0. I just um, hit the button to calculate, and this is going to give me my answer is this third column here. So I get for V1, V2, V3, my answers are 32 volts, V2 is negative 25.6 volts, and V3 is 62.4 volts. So I, if I go back to my problem, um, I recopied these voltages here that I got from my um, row reduce echelon form calculator that I found online. And going back to our circuit, now we have V1, V2, V3. Um, and these are all with respect to our reference node ground being zero. So let me know if you have questions about this and um, doing row reduce echelon form. You can use MATLAB or Octave if you like, or you can use this online calculator, it's fine too. Okay, thanks.